So with the upcoming releases of 65 and The Last of Us, I've seen a number of people, especially on Twitter, talking about how the girl dad is having a moment. Both of them being these grizzled, world-weary, manly men who are presumably going to have to open up their hearts and their minds to care for this adolescent girl who's in need of a father figure. And I will fully admit that as the father to a teenage daughter, I am a huge sucker for these stories. But it did have me wondering where did the term girl dad come from anyway? And even though I knew it had to be recent, I never would have guessed that it's almost exactly three years old. And that the term girl dad hadn't really caught on prior to the deaths of Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna back in January 2020. Girl dad being the term that Kobe used to describe himself in an interview where he was talking about his relationship to his children and that clip was played over photos of Kobe and Gianna. And those images, that audio is pretty resonant, right? Like we remember that. What you might not remember is how very shortly after there was a discussion about how Kobe's relationship with his daughters was being used to launder his reputation. This this label of girl dad was being used to change the conversation, which for several years prior to his death was about his history of sexual assault. And even if the term girl dad was new, that strategy is not. That whole rhetorical move where men deploy the existence of their daughters or of their wives, their sisters, as a way to deflect criticism, to defend themselves from the accusations that they either aren't considering women or they are themselves misogynist. That is very old. Because how can any man who calls himself a girl dad possibly have a problem with women, right? Now, of course, the origin of a term isn't everything. It doesn't mean that the term is used exclusively or even predominantly by misogynists to launder the reputations of men who have mistreated women. But it does make me feel icky for using the term to describe myself. As far as summaries go, this one is not very far off the mark. But Boy Mom is an interesting concept all its own with its own fascinating and ambivalent backstory, so let's unpack it. So Boy Mom entered the popular lexicon about 20 years ago and caught on about 15 years ago. During one of the regular recurring moral panics about boys being violent and out of control. And we definitely have to acknowledge that there is a value in the label. That women calling themselves Boy Mom are asserting that they are performing labor and difficult labor. And to share stories of that labor asserts that you are a member of a subculture and a community of boy moms. And in a society where labor is alienating and parenting is so often isolating, we can't undersell the importance of that. But we also can't undersell just how much that subculture traffics in potentially harmful stereotypes. And this is where we see a disconnect between the rhetorics of boy mom and girl dad. Because to be a girl dad is to transgress somewhat against the masculine expectations of manhood. Even if it's just some small, allowable amount. Because it involves nurturing, involving yourself in feminine acts. To be a boy mom, though, means to just fully embrace those stereotypes. To be a boy mom is to perpetuate harmful rhetorics like, boys will be boys. There's one other interesting layer to this conversation that I want to add, which is that boy mom again, unlike Girl Dad, is a trademark and has been since 2007. And the trademark holder is known to be particularly litigious, so don't go slapping Boy Mom on a t-shirt and try to sell that on Etsy. Because Boy Moms are apparently also girl bosses. Oh god, that was a terrible joke. Please don't hold that against me.